sugarcane area, like in the middle of nowhere. There's a pond out here. There's a house out here. So Matt, what do people say that come to your house for the first time? What the hell is going to do? <laughs> the soil that was here, people in the area call it muck. That is the most fertile soil oh, you've ever this. touched, but it's very organic and it erodes over the years. He told us every 10 years, we lose about four inches of elevation. So that's a major problem for building a pond. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So we are in the middle of sugarcane. In fact, there's a sugarcane right there. Yep. The sugarcane area, like in the middle of nowhere. There's a pond out here? There's a house out here? Yeah, I don't even know what we call this area. We are somewhere on Route 27 North off of 75. All sugarcane land. Everything yeah. you see burning in the background. Is yeah, there. I could literally see the fires from the sugarcane after they harvest it, right? Yep. So we're going to the town of Bell Glade, which is on the south shore of Okeechobee. There's not much more there except all sugarcane country, but we got a call about this project, let's say a year or so ago. Okay, so it's a newer water feature. Yes, he wanted a rec pond originally, and then the budget changed. So I came out and visited him, and we redesigned it for a koi pond. Tore out an existing deck that was in bad shape behind his house. And the last I saw this, he had the new deck was all started. The pond is looking great. He's an avid fisherman, so he gets game fish from the lake and puts them in his pond. Oh, cool. So there's game fish in here. He has some big bass and so forth in there. They're a little more difficult to see because naturally they blend in with their environment. But you'll be able to see them. But all it's right. A project in the middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Let's check out another beautiful aquascape ecosystem water feature. Oh, he's coming right at us. Looks like his backyard backs up to a sugarcane field or soy field or whatever that is. And there is the crop duster airport over there, and you can see the sugar factory over there. Yes, I can. And, uh, I'll let wow. uh, there he is. There's the man. Hello. This looks great. You got a wetland up here. Wow, I love this deck. Here, the fine guy, Greg, nice to meet you. Matt? Matt. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I love the southern accent. <laughs> so you, you're a local, huh? Yeah, I was born and raised here. Nice. Yep. But I got to ask before he even starts questioning on things, what was that monster that just swam by here? Wow, yes. like that. I've got a number of bass in here that are just wild caught. We threw them in here. <laughs> nice. I've got, I've got, I don't know, 50, 60 fish in here. Wow, what's the biggest bass you got in here? I think he's probably sneaking up on six or seven pounds now. Whoa, oh, yeah, okay, I can see him really, down there. Yeah, a school of something going on. Is that lunch? Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's nice. Really, whenever we do our pump down and clean out, I'm getting all the wild fish out of here. All right. Because they are expensive. That's about 300 bucks. Our yesterday. minnows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yesterday it was $300. Now it's down to about 110 <laughs> Big blackbird get the feeders out. They love that, but it sounds beautiful. Probably come and bathe out in the stream too. They do. My favorite thing about this pond right here, well, we're in the shade right now, is the location. You can see it from all the windows in the house. Well, that was due to me watching some of your videos before before Tony showed up. Nice. Yeah. The view from inside the house is important. Look at the size of those bass. Just cruising down there. My one suggestion is your water lilies. Do you know what I'm gonna tell you? So, the water lily pots are too small. Yeah. They're way, way, way too small. And so even though you got beautiful flowers, you need a pot about 10 times that size because it's root bound. I have the pots, I have the soil, I have the rock. I just haven't had the gumption. Grab one of those pots, grab that soil, and we're gonna repot one right now on right. camera. 
One of my biggest pet peeves is beautiful ponds with pots that are too small for the plants. And it's got full sun in here. What's amazing, Tony, is how clear it is. And that's the wetland filter. You know what we call this job? What? Riddick. So when the guys were here, the movie with Vin Diesel on it. Okay. And they called it, anytime the sun would come up, you have to do this, put on our, our full mask and hide from the sun because it was, what was it, Matt? 105 degrees out here. It was much warm, better. Warm, warm, warm the time of year. Now look at the size sure. of this pot, which is about a, the minimum size that I would use for a tropical versus what he's got in here right now, which is this size so this is what they sell them in and you can see the difference in the size right there so we're going to fill that with soil do you have any fertilizer yeah okay fertilize it and these plants will get six seven eight feet across them when we do that but right now it's root bound Biggest challenge here was the soil. None of this was here. Originally, there was an old rotted deck back here, and Matt's plans were to tear the deck out and do water features and some sort of outdoor living. None of this was here. The soil that was here, people in the area call it muck. It looks like coffee grounds. That is why the sugar cane grows so well out here, but it's very organic and it erodes over the years. All these homes, the bottom foundations are exposed. He told us every 10 years, we lose about four inches of elevation, so that's a major problem for building a pond. So we took four feet worth of his backyard completely out. Dug everything out, brought in dump trucks full of sand and soil and recompacted everything and started over. So build him a whole new backyard first of the sand and soil. Then the pond was dug and sculpted out of there. There is a wetland filter hiding down in here. Okay, so you can see the top of the snorkel there to give you an idea where it is. Just a small water flow in off to the side. Try to get the water moving around a little bit and help with some aeration. On the other side of the pond here, we had an issue getting the pump vaults mid-COVID when it was very difficult to get any plastic products. So we took two full-size snorkels, you can see down there, and cut up some centipedes and built our pump vaults out of those like we used to do before we had actual pump vaults. So that is the pump system. I believe there's two Aquascape SLD 5 to 9,000 pumps running it. They run this other biofalls here, which does help with the filtration a little, but it's definitely too small for this pond. That's why the wetland's on here. So this was more for looks for this stream waterfall going down. You can see we have two dose systems on it and here's our plethora of electric over here the controls for the pumps lighting controls and so forth he decided to do the bass and game fish because he does live on the shore south shore of okeechobee here and i don't know if this guy's going to cooperate but there's a monster down there you can kind of see his head he's peeking out looking at me the elevation here was not up here it was down there we were building up about four feet from the ground to get it back up to his back door step where it is now That buck we just talked about. Yeah, how root bound that is. So we'll just spread it out a little bit, just like you would a, a regular house plant or yard plant. And then see, I got the, the fertilizer tabs in there. Okay, so I'll put it right here, and I'll just load this up. That is the most fertile soil oh, you've ever this. touched. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And now this plant will grow 10 times as large. Look at the difference in that. Now that plant is going to grow All right, but so it's Terry. So you see what we just did with your lily? Yeah. We made it in a bigger pot, so you're going to get 10 times the amount of blooms and lily leaves right here now. Let's do this. And just like that, what did that take us? Not even 10 minutes. Might as well do two more, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to work it. <laughs> bigger plants and bigger pots. So I got to ask you, Terry, was this his idea? Because he's a fisherman and yes. he went along with it? Yes. So how do you enjoy living the aquascape lifestyle? I love it. It's great. It's nice to watch the fish and it's just relaxing. The sounds of the water is beautiful. Thank you for being on our vlog. I know you weren't planning on doing it. Thank you. So Matt, what do people say that come to your house for the first time? What the hell is going on? <laughs> what, yeah, what got into me? Well, what did get into you? Why did you end up doing this? I wanted to do something backyard to make it usable. We talked uh -huh. about doing a pool. I didn't really want a pool because I didn't want the maintenance on it. So my wife and I were good about that for a little while until she finally gave up. And then I started just YouTube it. that I thought it was going to be when I got going, but uh -huh. it's been, has it been a good investment? I'm very, I'm very happy I did it. And
And this is not an inexpensive investment, but what a difference than just a regular swimming pool. People would walk back here in Florida with a swimming pool and they wouldn't think twice about it. You got people back here coming in when they've got gars and giant bass and game fish galore out here. And they would just think, this is living the aquascape lifestyle. So you said they'd gotten wise to this, huh, Pops? For the most part, right. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I've got so much faith in there. They're, they would be as interested as anyone. When I first came out here, the back here, he had a, a deck that he wanted to get removed. It was an older deck. And he explained to me about, I believe the word was muck. He said, yeah, this muck needs pulled out of here because it erodes very organic, right? Right. It actually just decomposes. So because it's an organic soil, it decomposes. If you ever been to New Orleans and you've seen their roads and how crappy they are? Yeah. Same thing because of the muck. And there's no, no solid foundation to, to lay that asphalt on. Yeah. Same thing with my street. So anyway, the muck decomposes and, and, and ceases to exist. So you don't want to build this pond on it because all this stuff will settle and the liner will move and you'll have leaks, I would imagine. So I had to dig all the muck out prior to digging our holes. To and then you brought in fill. Yeah, about right, about in four fill. feet of the bottom of the house. So if you're on the corner of the house, Greg, you can see where the soil is eroded and the, and the Showing yeah, yeah. What would a project like this be with the wetland filter, a large pond like this, all the rock work, excavation from pondscapes? Probably 90000 So it was more expensive than you thought, but you're enjoying it more than you well, thought. Well, I knew exactly what I was getting into with that. I didn't know what I was going to get into moving on. So it's building the deck, building the kitchen. Oh, uh, okay. The, the whole lifestyle that started. Else. Every time I turned over another rock, I was another $1,000. <laughs> How cool is it that he built this lifestyle around the pond? That's what I love. I mean, yes. the deck right up to here made yes. me feel like living on the water. The cantilever deck. That pond only goes, what, 12, 14 inches under the deck. Yes, cantilever deck. It makes it appear that it goes farther. Well, this has truly been a paradise. Thank you for the hospitality and thanks for fishing. Yeah, you're very <laughs> Glad to have you done. Good job, Tony. I love the fact that this was a fisherman that ended up deciding that he wanted the place to put his fish. Didn't want a swimming pool, couldn't put fish in a swimming pool, but turned this and Tony coming in here and creating this backyard environment and how it created everything else, the lifestyle. This is what this is all about. Hopefully this channel has inspired you too to live the aquascape lifestyle. If you're interested in finding a certified aquascape contractor by you, check out the link below. I love my channel.